welcome to another tier list video. The first one was the Stuco members, but that was just Richmond Hill High School. Now we're going to expand into some much broader territory, and we're going to be ranking all of the Wired DSP secondary schools on a tier list. I just want to remind you guys that this is my opinion, and also that I did some very very um, brief research to get this video done, but obviously I'm just an amateur. I'm not an actual wire ESP worker. And, you know, if I'm wrong about something, I'm sure you guys will let me know all about that in the comments. Um, but anyways, this is a good video to watch. I mean, it's interesting to know where your school will rank. And, I mean, if you're going to go to Wired ESP and you're not sure which school to choose from, perhaps this video will help you choose. Of course, um, I'm going to be using the Fraser Institute, which is a ranking company. Like, they'll rank the schools. It'll help me make my decisions. And these rankings are based on from 2015 to 2020. That's where kind of these schools are ranked. So, in the future, obviously, it can change. It was different in the past. But as of right now, this is how the schools stack up against each other. So, without uh, further waiting, let's get right into the F tier. The first school that is going straight into the F tier is Sutton District High School. When I was going and researching through the Fraser Institute rankings, a lot of the Wired ESP school rankings rank relatively well, you know? You have the 9s, 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10, and then all of a sudden, you have Sutton District, which is ranked 2.9 out of 10. The only school that is ranked that poorly that low so Sutton District is going to go into the F tier. Uh, next up in the F tier we have Keswick High School which has a Fraser Institute ranking of 5.5. This is also the second worst ranking school in YRDSB according to the Fraser Institute. Of course even if you don't trust them it still says something about the school that it's ranked so low. None of the other YRDSB schools have a ranking that starts with the number 5. They're all at least 6 and above. And then also you got to know that this school is just a copycat of Richmond Hill High School which has the exact same building and which has been there from before. Next up in the F tier, we're going to have Woodbridge College. Now, Woodbridge College is rated 6.1. Not a very good ranking, but not only is the ranking low, but also it's the only secondary school that requires the students to wear uniforms, which I'm going to go ahead and say is a con. I don't know anyone who likes to wear uniforms. So that makes it a uniquely bad school in that sense. I mean, I guess it, a good thing about it is it has a French immersion program, but other than that, it's low ranked. You have to wear uniforms, F tier for this school. And the last school that is going into the F tier is actually not ranked poor but it has its own unique reason that is Vaughn Secondary School. It has a Fraser Institute ranking of 7.5. But why is Vaughn going in the F tier? Well, Vaughn is no longer called Vaughn. It's called Hodan Nalaye, and I might be pronouncing that wrong, but it has some controversy surrounding it. It doesn't matter what perspective you take from it. Either way, it's bad. If you think that it was good that they renamed the school, then that just means that the school was named after a racist slave owner for many, many years. And if you think that it was bad that they renamed the school, that's even worse for you then because you didn't like that the fact that they renamed it. So for those reasons, it's not a bad school. I mean, they have French immersion, they have AP. They, I mean, I've heard that they had like their own unique radio station. But for those reasons, because their name is controversial and their name represents the entire school, at least in the year 2020 or 2021, Vaughn slash Hora Nalaye is going to go into the F tier as well. All right, so moving into the E tier, the first school in the E tier is going to be Tommy Douglas. It has a Fraser Institute ranking of 7.9. Not bad by any means. Um, the only reason why this is going so low is because this is the youngest school in all of YRDSP, just recently opening in 2015. It's like a baby. It's only been out for less than 10 years, so it hasn't had a chance to really make a name for itself yet. I mean, in the future, it could move up, but for now, it's just a baby and it's got nothing really special to it quite just yet. Uh, it's too fresh to really give it any much merit just yet. So the next school in the E tier is going to be Dr. J.M. Dennison. And this is just for very small reasons. One of them is that it has a very small student population. It also has a low ranking in general, as you can see, 6.5. And then also, it's one of the two doctors, Dr. G.W., which is very clearly better than Dr. J.M. So, I mean, it's just for those reasons where it's like, okay, I mean, small school, poor ranking, the worst of the two doctors in YRDSP. We're going to put this into the E tier. So now we're actually going to rank the next two schools together. So the next two schools in the E tier are Emily Carr and the other one is Stuffville. 
or Stovale, sorry. So I think now is a good part of the video where I have to explain. The way this is being ranked is we're ranking them comparatively. So these schools are not bad schools by any means, but it's just compared to the rest of the schools in YRDSB, how do they stack up? So for example, Woodbridge College, which was in the F tier, I wouldn't say it's a bad school, but compared to the rest, it's going into the F tier. Emily Carr, Stuffville, you guys aren't bad schools, all right? But just compared to the rest, I couldn't find much interesting like i couldn't really find anything interesting about you guys on google i tried to do the research i didn't see anything interesting you know relative to the rest of the school is not very well ranked so for those reasons you guys are going to the e tier so next we're moving on to the d tier and i'm going to rank all of the five d tier schools at the same time but before i do that i want you to think of the d tier d tier is like the default tier and what I mean by that is when I was ranking these, as I said, these are comparative rankings, but I also wanted to have each tier have a relatively similar amount of schools in each. So each tier has about four or five schools in it. The D tier schools that I have listed down, I'll be honest, I don't really know much about them. But I do know that from their rankings, they belong somewhere here, somewhere in the D tier where they're just below that middle C tier point. In the D tier, I'll just, I won't keep you guys waiting is Stephen Lewis, Thornhill, Sir William Mullock, Huron Heights, and last but not least, Langstaff. They didn't have much interesting to them that I could talk about. I mean, I could give you their rankings, which I just did on the screen. I'll say a few things, like Stephen Lewis has a schism program, that's pretty good. Langstaff has French immersion, which is what they're known for, and they have AP classes, which is nice. But other than that, there wasn't really much I could say about them. And every single school above them, I there's something at least a little bit more interesting about them. And so when you combine the fact that these schools, you know, didn't have anything interesting I could talk about and they were ranked lower, although we are starting to get into the sevens instead of the sixes, when you put all those factors together, I'm going to have to rank these into the D tier. It's just how it fits in with everything else. So the C tier, I'd say, is very, very close with the D tier. There's not too much I can say about each of these schools, but they kind of are like, they go in the middle kind of area by default because they're, they've are they got good things about them. They're not so good that they go higher, but they're not bad that they go lower. The D tier and the C tier are very closely related because there's a lot of schools like that. But the C tier schools are the ones that have something about them that push them to be a little bit better than those D tier schools, which I just talked about. And so those C tier schools... Um, I'm going to list them all right now. Alexander McKenzie, Dr. G.W. Williams, Milliken Mills, Thorn Leia, Markham. So like I was saying, these schools are like the median schools. The C and the D tier are in the middle, but I put these C tier schools a little bit higher than the D tier schools for different reasons. So for Alexander McKenzie, Williams, and Milliken Mills, those schools have IB programs. That puts them a little bit higher than the schools in the D tier, which don't have those IB programs. Actually, I will say that Alexander Alexander McKenzie also is an art school, which puts it, a, it's a good thing about it. It would actually bring it a little higher perhaps into the B tier, but unfortunately for Alexander McKenzie, you guys have a bad reputation. Those are called Crack Mac. When you have a bad reputation, that just brings the ranking of your school down. So, you know, whatever it gained from being an art school, it just lost from that bad reputation. So, still in the C tier. But you guys are not bad by any means. I mean, it's good to have a library near your school too, I, I would assume. Thorn Leia, I just has a slight edge over the other D tier schools because of it's a gifted school. It's known for doing social justice things and it's artistic according to what I read online. And then Markham, I just put slightly over those D tier schools because of how big it is. It's one of the biggest schools in YRDSB. And I mean that in terms of student population. And it's also the name. I mean, Markham is like one of the best, biggest cities of York region. All those things combined make these five schools just slightly better than the other five schools, which are in the D tier. Five B tier schools I have listed here. Aurora, Burr Oak, Richmond Green, King City, and Maple High School. These schools are above the median. There's a lot of good things I can say about them. They're ranked better in proportion to the rest of the schools. Aurora, 8.4 ranking, very good. It has a strong French immersion program. So a lot of feeder schools from French immersion. I mean, it's a good school. Could be in a better area, but it's not a bad school by any means. Burr Oak. <laughs> I like their acronym because Burr Oak Secondary School makes the acronym BOSS, and that's just a BOSS acronym to have. Maple, uh, ranking of 7.7. 7. 
Um, I, it's also an IB school, so it's good. The reason I just put this one slightly above the C tier is because of the area. I mean, it's got a nice area. It's pretty close to Canada's Wonderland. So if you go to Maple, I mean, you live in a in a nice area over there. And I've heard mostly good things about the school. So Richmond Green um, has a ranking of 7.2. So it's not necessarily the, one of the higher rankings compared to the C tier. But there's lots of good things about it. I mean, first of all, it has a library attached to it. Not like a school library, but an official library that is part of the Richmond Hill uh, community. And it's a pretty big one, just for being attached to a school. It's located near an amazing plaza. I mean, I, I know where it is. And if you go to that school, you have so many options of where to eat lunch from. It's amazing. And it's just like one walk that is like a five minute walk away. You have a huge space outside and you also have like special programs like your carpentry program, which I know about because my friend went to your school. I had to transfer out of Richmond Hill to go to Richmond Green for your carpentry program. It's a B tier school. And plus you guys have a nice Instagram compared to the rest of the schools. King City has a ranking of 6.7. But the reason I'm putting King City in the B tier is because this school has been used in two movies. To Die For and Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, which is a Disney movie. And so because your school has been used in two movies, I mean, that's I, I got to give it to you, even if it's not uh, that famous of a movie for you guys. I mean, they're both movies. You can't complain. OK, so now we are in the A tier and for the A tier, I'm going to go back to listing each of them one at a time. The first school in the A tier is Richmond Hill High School. I might be a little biased, but I'm not putting it in the S tier. I don't think it belongs in the S tier, but A tier. Yes. It has a ranking of 8.2, it has AP classes, it has schism and co-op, it has the gifted program for grade 9s and 10s, but it is consistently well ranked, and we have one of the best, if not the best looking Instagram page. And also, Richmond Hill High School is where all of the schools meet for YRPC, we're like the capital, we're the middle of where all the schools are, they all meet there. So. For those reasons, Richmond Hill High School, solid A tier school. The next school I am ranking in the A tier is Westmount Collegiate Institute. 7.7 .7 is actually a step down from the 8s that we're getting now, but I'm going to put it in the A tier anyways because it has so much. Because it's attached to a community center. It has a, a theater. It has a strong arts program, Arts West. There's like gyms, recreational rooms, an arena. The school has an, a, a hockey team. Like, I don't know any other YRDSP school that has a hockey rink in their school. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe Bill Crothers has one. If your school has a hockey rink, please let me know. But a hockey rink? Like, this school has, has so many things. I'm going to put it in the A tier for those reasons. The next school in the A tier is Middlefield Collegiate Institute. The other of the college, uh, Collegiate Institutes. As it turns out, the Collegiate Institutes have a lot of resources which make them good. In contrast to Woodbridge College, unfortunately, which is in the F tier. But Middlefield has a ranking of 8 and it has a lot of tech courses. Automotive tech, transportation tech, construction tech, hairstyling and aesthetic tech, whatever the heck that is. Computer tech, communication, information, business, wood shop. They have Schism Co-op. If you look up their building, they have a sick, nice looking building. Next in the A tier, we have New Market, which has a Fraser Institute ranking of 8. And... I'm just, I'm going to give New Market a ranking of A tier, not only because they have a good ranking, but very simply, they get seniority. They are the oldest school in York Region. They're like the grandfather school of all the schools. Everything started with New Market. And not only are they the oldest school in York Region, but they are the fourth oldest school in all of Ontario. So they get a seniority for that. And some funny history about this school is they had many different buildings. They're, I think that they're currently on their third building. And two of their previous buildings burned down to the ground with fire. Like, it happened twice. That's It baffles me, but it just goes to show how old the school is. And the last school that is in the A tier, just missing that S tier ranking, is going to be Bill Hogarth. With a Fraser Institute ranking of 8.2. I mean, this one's a little bit simpler. It's just because it has a good rating. And also, it has a French immersion program. And it's a very, very big school. So now we are finally in the S tier. And we're going to start off by ranking two of them together. Pierre Elliott Trudeau. With a ranking of 8.8. .8. It offers a French immersion program. It has Schism. 
All right, and Unionville. Fraser Institute ranking also of 8.8. It is uh, located in Markham. It is known for its enriched arts program, formerly known as Arts York. Um, visual arts, music, dance, and drama. And it's so prestigious that it requires grade 8 and 9 students to audition for it. And it also has lots of facilities available to them. So with rankings of 8.8 .8 for both of these schools, very simply, they belong in the S tier because these are consistently good schools. Consistently good schools and some of the best schools in New York region. And if you want to send your child to a good school, these are very safe options for you to pick. The next school in the S tier, Bill Crothers. It has a Fraser Institute ranking of 7.8. Now 7.8 is not as high as the other schools in the S tier. It's nothing much to really boast about because it, you know, people actually say that people from Bill Crothers, they don't have as good grades. But it is known and it is well known that it is the athletic school of YRDSB. They are an athletics based high school. Many athletic alumni come from that school and it's a big school as well and well known if you can label yourself as the athletic school of yrdsb if you can just specialize in something you automatically get a really big boost just by nature of being the athletic school the athlete school of yrdsb that puts them into s tier because there is no other school that can call themselves that all right Second last in the S tier, we have Bayview Secondary School. Bayview Secondary School. I mean, whether you go there or not, it's either the school you love or it's the school that you love to hate. But either way, people know them and you gotta give credit where credit's due. Let's be honest, they're a good school, all right? They have a Fraser Institute ranking of nine and they're also were ranked ninth in the province. They have like a lot of things going for them. They were the oldest ib school which is probably why they're so well ranked they have such a nice area i mean you go out it's like rich and green you go out and you have a bunch of places you can go and eat and a lot of space all around you and i mean they're student trustees man i mean i know they don't have one currently in in the video that i'm talking about right now but it's no secret that they've just had student trustees over and over and over again throughout the years and there was that one year where every single student trustee candidate was a bayview student except for one which is from the last school what i haven't talked about yet but all their candidates were from bayview and then i think people were like okay Bayview's winning too much and then now they changed the system where you have to have a north south east and west candidate because they were just winning so much much that they had to change it and they consistently like have people on YRPC they're in the, a good area they're not like the middle which Richmond Hill High School is but they're close to the middle of everything the two bad things I'll say about them is one they're competitive which is not even a bad thing I mean that's a good thing I'd say but and the other thing is that their school is not that good looking I mean everything is beige dull I've been inside their building it's a little crusty but I mean those things aside they're ranked well. Everyone knows that they're a good school, which is why you either love them or you love to hate them. But Bayview, you gotta give them the S tier. But there is one more school left. And the last school on this tier list is probably the best or the second best, okay? Um, probably this one or Bayview. But um, Bayview is more well known, but this one is good it is in its own respect. The S tier school is Markville. It has a Fraser Institute ranking of 9.4 and in the year that I'm using it was ranked second out of all schools in Ontario. It's a big school. I've seen it from the outside and a little bit from the inside. It's very big. They have a unique schedule with a break and they have AP classes which is probably why they attract good students to go there and they're in a good area and Markville is a consistently not just good but a consistently very good school and I've only ever heard really really good things about them and I'm sure someone can come along and tell me something bad that they've heard about Markville but it's unlike other schools because I've at least heard bad things about other schools here and there but Markville I mostly hear positive things about it and I guess for a lot of those reasons it is one of the best academic schools in YRDSB it the best one actually it is the best academic school in YRDSB so which one's better this one or Bayview I don't know it's that that's up to you to decide this one I feel like it has the academics but Bayview has IB trustees positions has more of that stuff but anyways I mean no offense by making this video I'm making it for fun I'm making it to grow my channel because I hope that it'll attract a lot of you guys to watch 
If you disagree with something, please let me know in the comments what it is you disagree with. Did I get something wrong? Did I miss something? Uh, there's a lot of schools I didn't go into depth into. If you want to explain more about why your school should have had a different ranking, name your reasons down below. See you guys in the next video.